Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Cue the entrance music, I guess. Okay guys, today I'm going to be recapping my trip to the United States of America. I feel it's important to point out, since getting back, the world has kind of got themselves into an interesting place. However, we're not going to talk about that today. I'm trying to work on a video for next week, which we're kind of recapping everything that's kind of been put into place because of everything with that. I'm trying hard not to actually say the words because apparently YouTube's got very touchy with that sort of subject matter at the moment. Let's get into the recap. So the first thing I actually did when I got to the United States was check out Universal Studios in LA. Wow, I was about to say Orlando. Okay, overall my views of the park, which there, you can see some stuff. It was a fun park, I enjoyed it. The backstage tour was amazing. However, I probably didn't need the two days I had there, realistically. I was probably able to get everything done within one full day or even half a day, depending on how I want to deal with shows. It's a nice park, but probably not one I'm actually gonna be rushing back to. So the next thing we did was we checked out Disneyland in Anaheim. It was amazing. Millie, I'm, as you can see, a bit of a Disney nerd and proud of that. It was also my first chance to check out Galaxy's Edge, the Star Wars land within the parks. It was amazing. I'm not a massive Star Wars fan. I enjoy the films and TV shows and how can you complain about The Mandalorian? That is just masterpiece. But it was amazing. The only thing I would personally say about Galaxy's Edge in hindsight looking back on the trip was I found it took me multiple trips to the land to actually figure out what was going on. Because of the storyline of the land, the cast members there chose to use different languages like greetings of like bright day instead of hello. Those ones were understandable, but there was just other stuff. So trying to get a photo pass done was a bit more complicated. Also things like the stores not being labeled and kind of having to guess what a store is, what was inside, all that sort of stuff just made it a little bit more complicated. But yeah. First off, we, in that land, we did the Millennium Falcon ride, which was amazing. First time to check that out. Also within the Disneyland Resort, we got a finally, I finally got a chance, well, I'm sorry guys, I'm just getting a bit tongue-tied here. I finally got a chance to check out Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. I was lucky enough, because I went during the Halloween, I was gonna say Christmas, but just Halloween period, I was able to check out not just Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, but the After Dark version, which I think is Blackout? I could really be wrong, but the night version, which I much preferred. I'm a massive fan of the Tower Terror ride, which is the same ride system that they're using, as well as the ride that was actually there. But Disneyland Resort was amazing. I love Disney, we've covered that. <laughs> Other thing that was unique there was I was able to experience the first year that they were doing, well, sorry, I was getting tongue-tied, trying to remember what I was meaning. The first year that they did Oogie Boogie's Bash, which is very much like Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. However, based around the Disney villains. Amazing party. That World of Colour show was magnificent. The parade, yes, the parade was amazing. I'm trying to remember it all, guys. Unfortunately for me, this is three months back. I've got, got myself a recap, but even I have a hard time sometimes remembering what's going on. However, after that, we flew down to Orlando. Besides checking out the outlets quickly there, which we did a couple of times. So I'm going to say we, because I felt like I did the trip with you guys. But me, I, I was by myself for most of this part. Most of the trip, actually. Disney World's Halloween Party, as in Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. Amazing. The parties are very similar each year, but 
they are an interesting experience. If nothing else, because it's a separately ticketed event, yeah, that's the correct term, the attendance is a lot lower for the Halloween parties, but the shows, the parades, the candy, I was surprised it actually worked out, as you guys may have seen in the video, that Disneyland gave us more candy. They may have given us less per stop, but they had more stops within a stop. So like a trick-or-treat location at Disney World may have had one to three. Down in California, it was three to five kind of stops within there. I enjoyed it. Unfortunately, due to me actually, I was missing my flight to Orlando. I ended up having to toss all that candy. Well, when I say toss, I left it at the hotel for whoever wanted it in a nice bag. They even put a sign on it. So from there, we spent the next two weeks in Orlando. Disney World's amazing. We've already covered, I love Disney. There was a lot of stuff within the parks that I finally got a chance to check out. As well as Galaxy's Edge down in Orlando. As well as the Toy Story Land, the Slinky Dog Coaster. Uh, Avatar Land. Everything they've done in the way of updates for the parks. So, I'm trying to remember, bright lights also kind of throw me off. I also got a chance to go out to Universal Studios in Orlando. In my personal opinion, again, you can disagree, and please, if you do, down below, I'd love to have a conversation about any of the parks in the States or really anything from you guys. I much prefer the Universal Studios in Orlando, comparable to the LA. They're the only two in the world that I've actually done. I just find the Orlando one is much bigger. It's three parks instead of one. Where LA's is still largely an active lot, Orlando's isn't. It's a theme park first and foremost, which I feel just gives you a better experience, a theme park, so it's not trying to split its interests. Talking also about the Universal Studios Resort in Orlando, I finally got a chance to check out Volcano Bay. Again, only personal opinion, I love that park. It was amazing. Best water park I've ever been to. It was slightly annoying that I couldn't take my GoPro on the slides to show you guys. However, their Fearless River, well and truly personally made up for that. You guys saw how many times I ended up doing that while I was in that water park. My sister and brother-in-law now went there after their wedding and they didn't have as good of a time. So I feel it's one of those parks Depending on the crowd level will depend on how your enjoyment is. You guys may have seen when I was there, the park was empty. So I had less of a wait. It was more just constant slides for me, but where they had to wait quite a bit for the different slides, which apparently took away from a little of the aspect. Back into Universal Studios, at least the dry park, I got a chance to check out the Jimmy Fallon Race Through New York as well as the Fast and the Furious ride. Both were not open last time I was there. They were okay. In my personal opinion, they were okay. However, I'm not a fan of simulators. Both were simulators. I would say the Fast and the Furious one was a better done simulator. It had some cool set pieces you could actually see, but the actual show was exactly the same as what they have in LA. As well as there's a King Kong ride within Islands of Adventure, it's the same thing. Few different set pieces, one or two extra scenes, but it's exactly the same show as you'll see on the back lot tour in LA. Now, Jimmy Fallon's Race Through New York. I like Jimmy Fallon. He's actually a fun, one of the late night show hosts. However, the ride was not done well, in my personal opinion. Like I said, not trying to take any issues against it. The ride creators were amazing. They've done a great job there, but I just didn't enjoy it. I don't enjoy simulators. And the fact that it was almost like bench seating, you didn't even get the real aspect of a simulator. It was kind of more, you're sitting flat and you're seeing the screen move. So yeah, wasn't awesome. However, both of those rides did have like a virtual queue. However, I did like you could just go there, get a, essentially a fast pass and come back so it's less waiting in the actual lines and you can enjoy the rest of the park. So I know I'm flinging around my hands, it's just something I do. I'm trying to stop it a bit, guys. 
Other thing that I actually am really glad I got a chance to try, even though in hindsight, maybe probably wasn't the smartest choice, was my seven part challenge. I said in the video, it probably hadn't sunk in until I edited it. I've edited it now, I've had some time. It still hasn't completely sunk in, but it was fun and awesome, especially as currently these all these parks are closed, that I had a chance to check out Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, Magic Kingdom, Epcot. I think I may have spun those two around. <laughs> Volcano Bay, Islands of Avenger, and Universal Studios in Orlando, all within one day. It isn't a major thing, but it gave me a real sense of achievement for the whole challenge and everything. Also, while I was down in Orlando, I got a chance to check out the brand new Hagrid's roller coaster, which I had to wait about 90 minutes each time for, but it was amazing. I love that coaster. Yes, there are some POVs out there. Unfortunately, since the opening, they've got a lot more strict with the actual filming, so I couldn't film on there. Actually, I had to leave literally everything in my locker. I was able to get my cell phone on the second time, just because I saw other people do it. However, I wasn't going to risk that actually on the ride. So hopefully you guys can understand that. But I love that ride. The whole queue line is well themed. The ride itself is amazingly themed. I got the awesome chance my first time was actually front row on the bike, which from what I've heard now is apparently the best seat to have. But now we'll just leave Orlando and we headed out to Las Vegas. And we're in Vegas for about three days. I don't think I end up showing you guys too much, at least my first trip, because I was kind of just enjoying myself. I got to see some awesome shows. Chris Angel, Tape Face, Atomic Saloon. I think that was it. I'm trying to remember was there anything else. I think there may have only been the three shows. I know the second two were when I came back. We us talk about coming back to Vegas. We first got to leave. I was able to check out the Grand Canyon. Very unfortunate attempt to look at Route 66. It was fine, nothing wrong with it, but it just didn't turn out I wanted to as a, yeah. But then we were back in Vegas. Check that out. I showed you guys around a little bit of the resorts, parts that I like to play in. Then we, well, sorry. I completely forgot about Lake Havasu City. I thought that was after, but I also went to London Bridge. Lake Havasu City, but like I said, Vegas, and then from there I headed out to Denver. Denver was amazing. It was much colder. There wasn't much going on. I got a chance to check Jay and Silent Bob Reboot Road Show. Wow, that is a mouthful to say. But it was the Q&A as well as being able to see an advanced screening of the film of Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. I believe that is actually the name of the film. It was amazing. I... Second time I've been able to do a Q&A with Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes. I loved it. Unfortunately, I didn't film too much at the show or in Denver itself. I chose to use the opportunity, especially as it was cold, to kind of just edit and try to catch up on videos for you guys. From Denver, I went back to LA for about two days. It was just to kind of get myself reset. And then it was off to Hawaii for a week. Again, unfortunately, I didn't show you too much. I was going to Hawaii for my sister's wedding. That wasn't clear in the vlog while I was doing it. And I didn't realize how much of my time was going to be taken up. It was a very small wedding, including my sister and her fiance. It was 20 people in total at the wedding. Besides the wedding, I got a chance to hang out with one of my oldest friends and one of my best friends, Lulu. That's what I kind of called through him through her. <laughs> through the whole thing, so let's just keep going that way. Being able to have the week there with him showing him Hawaii, places I loved, things that I love to do, as well as just experiencing it all. From the Black Friday sales to the Thanksgiving lunch. It was a lunch, because we actually had the rehearsal dinner later that day. Rehearsal, yes, rehearsal dinner. And actually rehearsal itself, of the wedding. Wow. I barely slept in that time. Did a lot of partying. It was a lot of fun, actually. I really enjoyed myself. But from there, we went back to Orlando for a week with Lulu. We only did the parks twice, but we did do three parks and attempt to drink away around the world before I forgot. If I finally able to get back to the States after all this is cleaned up 
and the parks are reopened, like fingers crossed the world turns out in an okay enough way, I will definitely attempt to try to drink my way around the world again and properly with you guys. It's a fun experience. Yeah, okay, it's probably not smart. Binge drinking and stuff like that's not a great idea, but it's done within a reasonable enough sort of way. And it's a fun challenge at Epcot. But, wow, I almost forgot. The main reason I went back to Orlando so quickly was to check out the brand new ride, Rise of the Resistance in Galaxy's Edge. It was amazing. Yes, I had a false start with the day I got there, having such a long wait, and then turning up when I did get into line, even though I was falling asleep, the line then actually got shut down because the ride wasn't able to continue, which is unfortunate. I mean, I had to come back the next day, but it was worth the wait. I only did the ride once, but oh my God, it was beautiful. It was immersive. It was more than I could ever ask for from a dark ride, if that's even what you want to call it. Wireless, wireless, trackless ride technology. See, you know I can get these words out. <laughs> oh, with a drop aspect and the animatronics and everything, I'm like, oh, I am in awe of that ride and I cannot wait to check it out again. But I know I'm jumping all over. From there, we headed down to Hollywood, Florida. Is actually what it was. was. I'm trying to remember. I cannot completely remember. But I drove down there to hop on the cruise, which was a 10 day cruise through the Caribbean. I got a chance to check out NASA in the Bahamas, Bahamian Islands. Then we went on to, wow, I'm trying to remember. I believe it was Dominican Republic. It could be Costa Rica. No, no, Dominican Republic, I believe was accurate. Then we did Jamaica. Unfortunately, Jamaica wasn't as good as I hoped it would be. I loved the place. It was awesome. We, I was there with my mother, but we kind of got stuck with an older lady who didn't want to do anything too exciting. So I heard after getting back on the boat from other people we met that there was tobogganing and water slides and swimming holes with rope swings and all this sort of awesomeness which would have been amazing to check out and take you guys with me but unfortunately I just didn't know was a thing. All cool, just means I have to go back to Jamaica at some point. From there we went into the Grand Cayman Islands. Were magnificent. It was. I loved them. They were beautiful. Everything was quite expensive there. It is known as one of the biggest tax havens and we saw that in some of the buildings as we're going plus, plus, as we're going past places, we had our tour guide telling us like, oh, that's where, insert some tech billionaire, has a apartment for only 50 million or 20 million, or ridiculous sums either way. I also got a chance in the Grand Cayman Islands to try turtle, sea turtle. It was amazing. I never really gave a complete review at the time. I realized while I was editing, the burger itself tasted very similar to any other burger, but after I finished it, it kind of left me feeling weird, but like in a good way, like floaty. Definitely, obviously, something within the meat that had a physical reaction within me, and I liked it. It was nice. How have I realized, endangered animal, other parts, but we covered in there, that they do it in a reusable sort of way, like with the farming and putting them into the wild. If you guys haven't seen that, links down below are actually the full playlist to the whole trip. I believe it's about 65 videos. So, could have been longer. I should have fixed up some of those earlier ones to be a little bit shorter, but I was still trying to get my head around what I was doing. Hope you guys could understand that. But, back to our boat trip. From the Grand Cayman Islands, we are meant to go into Honduras, but as you may have seen at the start of that vlog that the weather was horrendous we physically could not dock with the um the dock so no going into Honduras so that was another sea day for us and we skipped over that and we went straight to Cozumel I believe it is yeah Cozumel which is a island that's technically owned by Mexico so it's a Mexican island it's kind of fun just a nice little relaxing day a lot of shopping I was able to find that a shirt 
for my uncle, which I completely forgot to show you guys, but it simply said, shut up and fish. He's a big fisher and he's also a very blunt person, so it suited him. It really did. Oh, that was kind of the whole cruise. That was my first ever time cruising. I did say I was going to give a review, but I never did in the vlog with it because of having to leave and get to DC. However, I wasn't a big fan of it. From what I've been told with other people on there with me and everything, that was, that was not normal for cruising these days. It was a very 70s cruise. There's a lot of older people. Very few activities going on. And the boat itself also rocked something shocking, which left me, as you may have seen in there, just nauseous and not feeling great the whole time. I'm hoping to try another cruise out at some point, but that particular cruise, I just didn't enjoy. There's a lot of stuff, and maybe it was just the cruise line. I've cruised with Costa, and they did advertise at the end to try to get people back, I'm guessing, a much better cruise ship that they're putting on the market, which fixed a lot of the issues of there's nothing to do. The pool was tiny, there was no activities, all that sort of stuff. But I now know, Costa's maybe not a company to go with, and the actual ship I was on was called, I believe, Luminosa, which means light in Italian. I honestly could get that wrong, but from what I've been told and what I understand, that's what it means. But after we finally got off the boat, we had to get to DC. Had a bit of trouble with that. We've been hit by that cyclone. I don't know if I actually explained it completely in the vlog, but yes, that part of Florida in got hit with a cyclone. The actual runway was flooded. No plans were taken, not plans. No planes were taken off or landing. TSA, so like the border security people, didn't show up. So that held up delays. Flights were pushed around. We ended up having Three, after, well, after our first flight was cancelled, we had three more flights just not show up, not leave. Kind of had to move us around a lot. We finally got to Baltimore, which is the airport closest to DC where we flew into. And our bags went there. It was just ridiculous. We were flying Southwest and rule of thumb, I flew Southwest for most of the trip. It's a decent airline. If nothing else, it gives you two bags where a lot of other airlines charge you. So you deal with some small issues with it for that, but overall it's an amazing airline. Just that airport in Florida, which is the Hollywood airport, they were just horrendous at. Because they lost my bags, lost my mother's bags, lost everyone on the plane's bags, just didn't bother putting them on. Later on, my mother actually had to go through the airport again. And again, they lost her bags, this time for a week. Left with no clothing. So, I'm not sure what's going on with the Hollywood, Florida airport. But, just not great, it appears. But, back to our DC issues. So, the bags didn't arrive. We finally got them, like, two hours later. Yes, they tried to help us with different meal vouchers and things like that. Which is fair enough. But, unfortunately, after getting to the hotel, we found out... All of our bags were soaked, like completely through. I had some hard bags that the water had gone through the seams, but I was traveling with a massive duffel because my bag, my small bag, got damaged in Las Vegas the first time. I had to get a new bag, as you guys saw. It was material, like a canvas. So everything, and I mean literally everything in my bag was soaking wet which has actually damaged some of my clothing, as well as some of my mother's clothing in her bags were damaged from it, which is ridiculous, but ah, it's annoying. But DC, oh, it was amazing. I enjoyed it. It's a very interesting city, but not sure if it's one I'm gonna rush back to. Very much like we have in Australia with our capital of Canberra, is it seemed a lot more set to the government business than anything else. The museums are amazing. I love the Smithsonian. And they are actually building a TV and movie one at the moment. Even though I thought 
That's what American history was, but it turned out not to be. They are actually building a pop culture one currently, apparently. That's probably actually on hold with everything that's going on. But then I had to come home after all that. Had Christmas in DC, loved it, but that was the trip. Just recapping it all, giving my opinions now has been like a couple of months after I've got back to see what did I feel, what was it like, all that sort of stuff. I loved it. I was gone for about nine and a half to ten weeks. It was amazing. I really wish I could do it again. And I'm looking forward to doing it again, but just got to wait till everything clears up, hopefully. I know the world is in a very dark and scary place at the moment, guys. Like I said, links down below to a playlist for my whole trip. Try to bring you guys up. Good try. But please, guys, remember to stay safe, special with everything. And I guess that's a wrap. I'll see you guys in the next one, okay? See ya.